Hey, good evening. Good evening. We're back. It's the final part, part four. Uh, when you feel you are out of place, okay? When you feel that you're out of place. And I hope you enjoyed the first lesson all the way up until now. And I know the second and third part of the lesson was very, very crucial. Um, these were six areas that when I was struggling with where I needed to be at, because I felt like at one time I was out of place, and the enemy was trying to attack my mind to, tell, to try to get me to quit. This is just shortly before the Christmas holiday. We were going through things with the business. Things weren't right. And all of a sudden, right just before the Christmas holiday, the enemy attacked me with a sugar diabetes attack, which I never had, ever. But I'm going to blame me. I was part of it because, as most of you know, I'm the toothless pastor. I don't have no teeth up here. I only have teeth down here. And normally I put on my false teeth, but a lot of times, I'll be honest with you, I don't feel comfortable with them on. Now, if you want to make fun of me about my teeth, you got to answer to, you got to see her. Because, see, she's Michigan. And and she comes from this, this part of Michigan. And when Michigan get, gets mad, the mitten turns into a fist. <laughs> so you're going to have to deal with the incubator, shrink the incubator. All right? Don't underestimate me. But the point I'm trying to prove, I was eating gummy bears. I was chewing on them because I don't chew tobacco. Because I had a habit of chewing on my jaws every time, like, like that. Like I'm chewing gum. But there was nothing there to chew on but my gum, so I had to substitute something. Not knowing that that raised my sugar level. You understand what I'm saying? And I never had diabetes before, but I normally am a very healthy person. I exercise, I eat healthy, but I also had a sweet tooth. Let's put it that way. So that's the thing that raised my sugar. But I'm not going to claim it's not my sugar. It's the devil's sugar. So the moment after the attack hit, it was too late for me to even go to my very own doctor until after the holidays. I won't see my doctor till tomorrow. This is four weeks ago. So my sugar level was 400. Over 400. And I brought it down between 96 and 106 without a doctor. Which means that his word says by his stripes I'm healed but 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 b u t but conjunction I had to do something to bring right mama to bring that sugar level down so with mama's cooking healthy with my daughter Katasha who's a nurse riding my back on what I should do and eating habits. Brother. And my baby brother, who was diabetic for some years, he told me what to do and what to take. Thank God for my brother. Brother Omar Morton, and I'm going to give props to on here, who we talk off and on. We're both New Yorkers. We're both in the same Bible school back in the 90s together. Say so he's just surpassed me. Apostle Omar Morton. <clears throat> he went through the same thing. So he was telling me who to go through and what pills I should take. And it would bring the sugar level. Thank God for you, brother. My sugar level's down normal without a doctor. And standing on the word of God. And standing on the word of God. Resisting temptation. Resisting the temptation of going back 
to my old eating habits, I have to stop eating rice. I have to stop eating bread. Drinking juices. I have to stop drinking these juices that I thought was healthy for me, but they were full of sugar. I still do the fruits, but moderation, baby. Mm -hmm. No noodles. <clears throat> no more English muffins. And the hardest part for me, because I'm a New Yorker, we love White Castle hamburgers. And the bread is it's delicious. With the onions and everything. I still got some in the freezer. Had I ever touched White Castles in four or five months, baby? Mm -hmm. Not one leg. I see it in there. My eyes get big every time I see it. But I got to stay away. But God, physician, what? Heal thyself. Without a doctor. Now I'm going back to the doctor tomorrow morning, tomorrow, excuse me, tomorrow afternoon with a good report. Mm -hmm. And they can't believe it. I had the new patients calling me up. I had the physicians calling me up. Mr. Johnson, you need medication. You need... No, I don't. No, I don't. God made sure he took care of me and put the right people around me to encourage me. And I did what they said do, and it worked. Faith that I works... Is dead. Is dead. If you do what you're supposed to do, and stand on the word of God because your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. You got to take care of this body. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the sugar was going to do that to me. That sugar had me blind. I, I'm blind as a bat. They said you almost could have gone in a coma. They said, why are you still standing around? You should be in a coma. That's what the you doctor told me at the fair. And I drove myself to the hospital, which was two blocks down, blind. It made it with no accident. Mm. It had to be the grace of God. And parked straight to until mama got there. And then when the nurse came out, we found a parking place. And I backed into the parking place like a full-fledged truck driver does. Blind as a bat. And I was in the hospital till 2.30. And mama come about 11 o'clock. Found a parking place for mama. We we went up there to two o'clock, then they said the blood sugar went down. And I said, Well, down to what? They wouldn't tell me. Got home, it was in the three hundreds. I said, They sent me to the hospital like this. It's still high. My brother said, It's still high. So, Brother Omar, Brother Johnson, you gotta get to get that down. I said, I I I why well, started feeding me right foods. Brother told me about this drink. Where's that drink? Here we go. Got my big old jug. You know what this love's jug's full of? Michael Johnson juice. Michael Johnson healing juice. <laughs> Water. What's it? Kanye pepper. Um, couple tea bags. Couple of tea bags. Any tea. any healthy tea though. Green like herbal tea, not caffeine. Yep. And ginger root, put ginger root, garlic, ugh. cinnamon sticks, and plenty of cinnamon sticks. No sugar. Not one Make stick. sure you got that recipe. If you didn't get that recipe, play it back. I'm not going to repeat it again. And I drink it. And you simmer it on the stove. I burn it on the stove, burn it up on the stove in the kettle. Put it in the refrigerator, and it tastes so good. This drink. For all diabetics, you need to get this drink to bring your sugar down. Mm. And stay away from the carbs and bread and stuff and rice and, and pasta and stuff like that. And fast food joints. In fact, don't eat no fast food. If you go to fast food, get a salad. Mm -hmm. Some chicken or some tuna fish <clears throat> or something in it. Yeah. And watch the sauce that you put mm -hmm. on it too. You leave the fries alone. Leave the fries and leave the potatoes alone. Yeah. All that starch up in there. And jack your butt up. See, that's your problem. You get up and the doctor tell you don't eat it. You go right back and eat it, hard head. Should be doing what the doctor tell you to do and give it to God and eat certain foods under moderation. Give it to God. Stand on the word. And within a short time, buy a strip. I even got my visions back. Now, every once in a while, I see a little bit of blurry close up. But I got my reading glasses, so it's going to help me out.
All right. Now, who was that? Where were we? What were we talking about at the beginning? Why did we bring all that up? Why did we bring all that up? We're talking about when you're feeling out of place. Well, there's six areas right around that time that God had oh, yeah. to deal with me in. And when I felt like I didn't belong, and especially when I was blind as a bat, sitting in the bed, feeling sorry for myself, and baby said, get up. Hey, Joe, what's going on? That's my buddy over in Dallas, Texas, Joe, from the little, little Rock, Arkansas. There, there's six areas where God had to deal with me in about me not feeling sorry for myself and feeling out of place. We already went over them in part one, part two, part three. Now we're on part four. But I want to share with you what I had to go through. And I felt like I was out of place in the ministry. That was number one. Because I was not being supportive. Uh, or people were not being supportive of what I was into. And I felt like they don't care about me. They're not listening to me. Well, part of that comes from mm -hmm. you, the traditions of men. Mm -hmm. you say you're a pastor. Mm -hmm. Where's your brick and mortar church? Mm -hmm. How many people do you have underneath you? Mm -hmm. The Today's church mm -hmm. is designed to be just that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I even asked God, and baby, to conjunction with baby said, I even asked God, are you sure? Mm -hmm. You called me to this ministry? Because ain't nothing happening. If it's not, it's not happening in this community. We done went through one pastor, left him. Now he's mad because we left him. I mean, I don't know what's up. We don't, we don't, they don't speak to us no more. We try to reach out. Nobody says anything. Then the other one, it was some crazy cooped up stuff that was going on that we didn't condone. In the body of Christ. And I had to walk away from it. And when I tried to say it in love to him. It's like. I got cut completely off. But in the beginning they needed you. Oh but oh. We, we need your word. We need. But all they were looking at was the hoopla. Or the excitement of. Having somebody that speaks the truth. But when the truth came. They couldn't accept it. So, I said, oh, well, I'm going to leave him alone. I'll just continue to teach on social media like I've been doing and leave him alone. So, I felt like God wasn't moving. And I felt like I was left stagnant in this business that we're in, the trucking and the taxi business. It was like, it was no progression happening. It was happening, but not <clears throat> at the rapid point where it was happening before when we first started it. I got ill. I rebuked the illness. Me and my wife had, we had the worst Christmas. I'm not going to lie to you. We had the worst Christmas, and I was feeling miserable too. It didn't feel like no Christmas up in here, up in here. We worked that day. We worked. We worked through Christmas and almost New Year's, didn't we, Mama? Mm-hmm. And New Year's, I don't want to talk about that. Didn't even make it any better. <laughs> it went from good to bad and from bad to worse. I let my frustration sink in. And I had to go off on some people that the devil was using to push my butt on New Year's morning in a taxi. Satan was at work, man. I'm telling you. And at this time, I failed the test as a man of God. And I really started drooping, looking more down at myself. Even though I was in the right, even though mama was in the right, didn't condone right, don't do right, don't make a wrong. 
You understand what I'm saying? But I'm man enough to come and share my weakness. Rather than me be phony and fake. And blessed and highly favored. And trying to, eh, how are you doing, Brother John? I'm blessed and highly favored. No, I'm not. I was miserable. Because I wanted more God and I wanted to do his work. And I was working so I could build this thing so I could continue to do his work. And I was opposed and caught off God by the ugly, nasty Satan. Because of what was in my flesh. And I felt like I didn't belong. I felt like I was out of place. I finally broke down. I cried. My wife cried. We both cried. One day she cried and I was comforting her. Another day I was crying and she said, get up. <laughs> What's that for comfort? <laughs> See, I comfort her and she told me to get up and she's supposed to be comforting me. But us men, we built to last. All right. Oh my, don't get it twisted. All right, all right. Sometimes we got to be hard on one another. Yeah. But my wife was like, well, some, sometimes you can milk it to a, a certain degree, but sometimes men can be big babies. Oh, I was a I, I was a big baby with my finger. Joe, I was a big baby with my finger right in my mouth. But me being a mother, when I was sick and down and I had little kids mm -hmm. and the other person, the other significant other spouse had to work. Mm -hmm. I wasn't married to him. I was married mm -hmm. to my first husband. Mm -hmm. And he had to work. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter how sick I was. I had to take care of them babies during the day. Had to do what you had Women to do. Women are built to last too. You are built to endure had through to do everything. What? That's why we don't, we only feel sorry for a man to a certain degree. Yeah. And for a, 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 maybe a minute or two. Yeah. We don't stay like, we don't stay down. We don't grow and allow depression and anxiety sinking because we catch the devil at his game while he's trying his devices and we cast him out mm -hmm. and we deal with him. But then we have to deal with our flesh too. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So what I did, I broke down. We had a deep talk with Jesus and baby calls in her, what? Come to Jesus meeting. Come to Jesus meeting. Or back to Jesus meeting. And we started praying in the spirit. And we told God a few things or two. And this is what God turned around and told me. So be careful what you go to him about. And how you go to him about it. He says, I placed you both here. <clears throat> in Havelock, North Carolina. This is what God told me. All through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I placed you here in Havelock. So I can use you. For my glory, right? I had it written down. So I'm trying to look at it and I'm seeing a little bit blurry, but my vision's coming back a little bit better. And I allowed a hardship to test both of your characters. Listen to this. And this is for you too. And so you can get ready for the call that I called you to for your life. I'm preparing you. I'm allowing trials, I'm allowing hardships, yes, to get your character in check because this is a real big thing that I'm calling you to do. And I just sat there listening. I wrote it down as the Holy Spirit gave it to me. And he says that, but you allowed Alan and Lisa I said, well, well, it's just me, not Lisa. Lisa's not at fault. He said, no, it's both of you. Both of you have allowed offense. Yeah. Both of you have allowed anger and rage. You have allowed gossip and talking about bad about folk and judgment. You were even compromising with people, not taking a stand for God, and you're both are supposed to be pastors. I called you and I told you and I told you to be separated from these people. Hmm. But yet you compromised. So when we did that, and he showed me different intervals when we did it. And the thing is, we did it not knowing that we did it. And I said, wow. And I sit there with my mouth wide open like, 
Okay, God. What else? Beat me up, Scotty. Take me away. He says, you over-exaggerated things. And you lied. I'm telling on myself. I'm, I'm telling on myself. I am a person that can give in and show you where my weaknesses are, like Paul the Apostle. There's no shame in my game. Of the flesh, just like you, you've done it too. So I'm not only talking to me, I'm talking to you. So we've all exaggerated, over exaggerated with people. We told lies. Listen to this. And we lust after things in life. Bitterness came in. Unforgiveness came in. It got in just to, just to, and, 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 and we tried to move it out of the way. So I got silent. And I stopped talking. Until I learned to stop retaliating. God had to deal with me. You hadn't seen this on Facebook for a while. Because we were doing some self-examination. I said, okay, God. We had to learn from God. Not to retaliate. Not always be a person that has the last word. Shut it up. Some of you need to learn don't retaliate. Shut it up. <clears throat> Listen to this. What happened was the material blessings that we wanted from God, it was put to a halt. Well, we had money there, but a lot of things were put to a halt. He says, I'm not going to bless you again until you desire to change. You know what it is. You know what the issues are. He says, how can I bless you? How can I deal with you when you can't even cooperate? And he showed me in the scripture, Philippians 1, 6, he said, he who begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete. But how can he complete it when we're not cooperating? He gave me John 15 when he talks about us being in the vine and we can do nothing without him. But how can we abide in him and he abide in us when we're doing what we want to do? So that means we're separated from the vine and we can burn. I got convicted. I started telling my baby about what the revelation that God gave me. Then Number two, he started dealing on me about humility. We talked about that the last lesson. We talked about the thorn in the flesh. Remember that? Go back and reiterate what we taught. Because the thorn is not a sickness. The thorn is that thing, that, that thing, that thing, that thing that you can't stand. That the enemy knows you're weakened and he's coming there to buffer you. A messenger of Satan coming to buffer you. And you fail the test every time and you keep going before God asking God, please deliver me. Please set me free. And God, every time you get prideful, turns it up to humble you. <clears throat> and then he tells you, then he got the nerve to turn around and tell you that his grace is all you need. Depending on his grace is all you need. His unmerited favor. You can do nothing without me. Depending on my grace. Grace is all you need. So I'm going to mm, turn it up and make it worse until you change. Then he started dealing with me about repentance and this. And humility. And I hate that. Oh, no. If you're going to come back to me, you got to go back to the person that you offended. I'm not going back telling them nothing. That's what some of y'all say. I already repented before God. No, you didn't. Because Matthew 18 said that you got to go make peace with him first before you come to the altar. 
Even if you weren't in the wrong. Even if you weren't. So now, he dealt with me about repentance. He dealt with me about my filthy, nasty self. About the habitual sins. About the sins that you sin unknowingly. This might be the reason why people don't want to be around you. And it seems like you feel like you're out of place. Because ain't nothing going on in your life. Because you're holding on to things that God wants you to let go. So those were the two areas. Now we're going to deal with the third area. Number three, and, and this is going to shock you. God's asking you a question through the Holy Spirit. Can you be faithful in the area that God allowed you to be in? Can you be truthful? Can you be honest? Can you be a person of integrity? I hear crickets. It got quiet. Can you be faithful in the area that God allowed you to be in? In jobs, on your business, in your ministry. Can you be faithful to your wife or your husband in marriage? Or when things get rough, are you ready to give up? That's what the Holy Spirit is telling me. He's challenging you. Because some of you have failed the test already. And God's grace is there to pick you back up. Like he picked me and Lisa back up. What are you going to do? Are you ready to give up? It's too much for you. You ready to move to the next town? Me and Lisa was going to get up out of here. I got land in South Carolina. I don't have to be here. God wouldn't open up the door for this. Get no place down in South Carolina for us to prepare to get the land situated because he still had a work for us to do here. <clears throat> we tried, but the door kept shutting in our face. You, you can't run. Sometimes situations are happening not because it's time for you to move. Sometimes your situations is happening because of your lifestyle and how you are living. Now we covered some of those areas, two of them today. We talked about me in the sin. We talked about Lisa and our fault that we did not want to look at when people tried to make correction and tried to tell us. We, we were hard-headed and we didn't listen. And then we had this thing called humility. And then God started dealing with us about our thorn, about our weakness. And said, stop bragging about what you got. Start bragging about your weakness. Start bragging about you being weak so I can be strong in you. And people don't like to admit their weakness. Their and weakness. people don't want to admit it. And then he showed me another thing. He says, bear one another's burdens. We don't care about what Tom's doing down the block. We're worried about, worried about getting ourselves together. But you better be concerned because Jesus said, it's the law of Christ that you should bear one another's burdens. That means James chapter 5 Verse 14, I believe, has to come alive in your life. That means you need to be praying for each other and you need to confess one another's faults that you might be healed. Iron sharpens iron. You need fellowship with your brothers and your sisters so you can talk deep stuff. You don't go behind their back and put them out on social media, man. Ladies, you talk to them and you learn from it. And you even confess your faults. But you don't talk behind each other's back. That's something you share between you two and God. And when you pray that you might be healed, guess what? The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. That means both of you, iron is sharp and iron, so you both can grow and learn. 
But what we're doing in the body of Christ, we're beating each other up. We're putting each other on social media. We're talking bad about each other. And we put each other down and we're not building each other up. Where is the love of God in this? You said you love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. No, you don't. Because if you don't love your enemy, if you don't love your neighbor as you love yourself, you don't love God. If you don't care about your brother falling from grace and you won't reach out to try to grab him or pull him or her back up, you have no love. This is why with some people, it seems like they're left alone. Because when people see that type of spirit about you, they don't want to be around you. It makes them uncomfortable. It, it, exactly. And they're, they're expecting love from the church and they're not getting love from the church. I'm talking to leaders. You're supposed to be setting the example. I was supposed to be set and I got I allowed people to get to me. At least I can admit it. And I became better. As a pastor, yes, I'm human. Yes, Lisa's human. But at least we're not afraid to admit it. Some of you are afraid to admit it because you're afraid you're going to lose your congregation and your tithes and offering ain't going to be paid in your church. I'd rather be real than be fake and phony and be a person of dissimulation. You know what dissimulation means? The Bible, when it says in Romans chapter 12, Verse 9, it says, let love be without dissimulation. Let love be without being two-faced. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of two-faced people in the body of Christ. We don't care. It's about us. It's not about our brother anymore. It's not about the love of God that's shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. And the love was shed abroad in our heart, but we're not using it. There's a lot of competition going on, too. The problem is, it's like my baby said, we compete, we fight, we call. Don't let me go there. Tell the James 4.1. Oh, I'm feeling the urge of the spirit right now. Let me, let me show you something. Can you be faithful? Can you be committed to the area that God allowed you to be in? Look at this. From whence come wars and fighting among you? Since when is the war and fights come among you? Why are you fighting and quarreling? He's asking you a question. Read. Come they not hence, even of your lusts, that war in your members? Your lust that wars in your body, in your flesh, that you're trying to keep under control. You need to get this under control. This is the way you want it, not the way God wants it. Check this. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and mm -hmm. cannot obtain. Why? Ye fight and war, and ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask, and ye receive not, because ye ask amiss. You want to know why? You know what ask amiss means? You're asking God with the wrong motive. You're asking God because you just want it, and that's it. You want to get between Sally's legs. You want this. You want that. You want this, but you're never satisfied. So it makes you angry because other people have it better than you. Well, why is my wife not fine like his wife? And you're sitting there covering another man's woman. Hmm. Oh, I've seen it. Well, he got a big church and my church is small. Maybe your community is to deal with people in your community with a smaller church. You don't know how this man or woman has sought God to get to where they are right now. Maybe too much is given, much was required, and they passed the test. Maybe you didn't. That's why you may not have what they have. But yet at the same time, you could have 12 and be more effective. Your church be more effective. More effective in your community than them that have 2,000 people. Yes. Because sometimes I've seen churches that had over 2,000 members, and they drove the pastor crazy. Mm-hmm. And he was wishing dad gone. I would bring this down to maybe 60 members because there's only 60 faithful members out of 2,000 people. The more people, the more problems you got. I talk to a lot of pastors. Let me tell you something. I got a best friend down in, down in, um, down in Claxton, Georgia. The Reverend Michael Dickerson, Baptist Church. One of the biggest Baptist churches in that area. 
thousand member church. He has a graveyard right next to his church. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Michael told me most of the people that got on his nerves, he had to do their eulogy. They're sitting right here in this graveyard. And when they try to come against the man of God, and I warned them, I didn't have to fight them no more. My best friend, we knew each other since high school. We used to have a singing group in high school called the Fantastic Four Plus One. And he said he didn't fight with him. He didn't feud with him. He just gave it to God. Next thing you know, he was doing their funeral. You want to fight against the man of God? You want to wreak havoc? You want to <clears throat> raise hell? <clears throat> oh, well. It is what it is. You brought that on yourself. Because you oppose the ministry. You oppose a true man of God or a woman of God. You can oppose me and Lisa for all you want. You may not like her because she's white. You may not like me because I'm black. Hey, hey you don't want to see us together? That's your problem. I'm going to continue to be with my wife together. Happily married. And doing the ministry. Because mm -hmm. this is what God foreordained. Because what God's trying to do through us, and we know that he's trying to bring the unity of the body together. Because mm -hmm. it's not a lot of mixed couples that's teaching this thing that with us. We're one of the few. I know some other, two others, three others. Not that close to them, don't know them that well. But I know they're teaching the word just like we are. And they're giving a foundation. Because I listen to them. <clears throat> and I believe they've gone through the same opposition that me and Lisa's gone through. That might be the reason why we don't have a church now. That's one of the reasons why I already know. Because they already let us know to our face. And we're in the 21st century. Trying to bring me up in the church and consult me without my wife. No, 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 it don't work like that. You're going to have to consult her with me. When I do this, me and my wife are together. Ain't no shame in my game. I'll preach it over the pulpit, black, white, I don't care. If you got a problem with it, you got to take that up with God because God's no respect to a person. And if you're holding hate and harboring hate in your, in your heart and you continue to harbor it, the wages of sin is what? Death. Play games with God if you want. What God has ordained and what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. You could be splitting hell wide open trying to oppose the truth. Mm. Can you be faithful to the ministry? Can you be faithful in your job? Can you be faithful in your job and business? Do you give up easily? God is challenging you. Maybe this is why you feel like you're alone and people don't want to be bothered with you. Because you start something and you can't finish what you start. Then you want to go off on people and you try other options to get out of what you're in. Oh, I've done it before. Never worked out. So you continue to go through hardship because you tried to take shortcuts. Then you decide, you, oh, well, I better do it this way. Let me find the easy way out. Let me just beg people for money. Let me uh, go over here, try to use brother. I know he'll loan me about three or $400. Then things are not working out for you. Because you never finished what you started. You weren't faithful. Did God tell you to quit? That's his question to you. Did he tell you to quit? Or did you just decide it that you wanted to quit? Because it got too hard. Or did you stick with it? While it was still hard. Me and Lisa still going through hardship. Are we giving up? Mm -mm. You know why? Why is that, Mom? Because we're built to last. Because we're built to last. It's one of my messages. 
Go on the, good message go on the YouTube page and built to find, last. or the message on <clears throat> do you have endurance. Mm -hmm. You have to learn to get stickiness about you. Yep. You need to learn what it is, patience, and also perseverance. You need to learn what consistency is all about and stay there. When you're in God, you need these traits to walk this relationship out with Jesus Christ. If you don't have it, you just don't have it. This is what it took great men and women of God to build the ministries that they had. Resilience. Perseverance. They didn't give up. I'm talking about the true men and women of God. Or the ones that may have started out right. But now they're kind of going toward falsehood. And believe me, God is checking them if they're not right. He's going to put them back in check. It's for you to put your mouth off them and start praying for them. Because they started out right. Just got a little bit off track. Still supposed to have the love of God for them. But are you faithful? Did God tell you to leave that marriage? Oh, this is plenty of times I try to get up and leave mama. God wouldn't let me. <laughs> There's plenty of times mama wanted to get up and leave me. But where's mama right now? Right next to you. She's still here. She's still here. We have to fight the good fight of faith. We married, did marry for better or worse. For rich or poor. Sickness and hell. To death to his part. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to kill each other. No. Nah. No, nah, that, 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 that's not going to happen. <laughs> no. That, that, that's not going to happen. <laughs> no. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Until death to us part. Did God tell you it was time for you to leave that church? Mm. That's the hard part. Mm. Or was it for you to leave? Because the leadership wasn't together because God said it was time for you to leave and then the person that was the pastor who was supposed to remain faithful who saw that it was time for you to leave did not bless you and they got bitter because you left I'm talking to leaders <clears throat> you saw somebody leave your church it gave you a chance to be an apostle because he was getting ready to launch out and start his own ministry. He'd been up under you 23 years. Release him. Thank God that you nourished him in the things of God. Now he can start his own church under your tutelage. And now you're a full-fledged apostle. Or you're beginning to be one. And then you can start teaching people under you to go out. Are you faithful? Even for the under shepherd that you're teaching. Or do you want them under, under you for 30 years to be a deacon, to be a minister, to be an elder, and then die and go to hell? Or die and go to heaven? Which one? Because if you're not teaching them and equipping them how to go out and get it for himself, you're defeating the purpose. Because the churches are made to what? What did the Bible say? In Ephesians chapter 4. What did it say in Ephesians chapter 4? Look at verse 12. Or verse 11. He said he gave pastors, apostles, apostles, pastors, what? Teachers. Baby's going to go there. See, some of you think they're supposed to stay up in your church forever. And he gave. Listen. Some apostles. Uh, some prophets. Uh, some evangelists. Uh, some pastors. Uh, and teachers. Look at, look at verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. For the maturity. For helping us be mature. For the work of the ministry. For the work of the ministry. Not to sit up under your church for 30 years and die. Read. For the work of the ministry. Uh -huh. For the edifying of the body of Christ. For the edifying of the body of Christ. What else? Till we all come. Till we all come. Uh -huh. Into the unity of the faith. Till we all come to what? The unity of the faith. We got to be unified. We got to come together. Why are we fighting each other? Read. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. And the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man. Unto a mature man or woman. 
Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Unto the measure and the stature and the fullness of Christ. We got to go out there and do the work. Not stay up under you forever. Still have relationship, but you're going to have to release it sometime with the other brother. Pastor. Isn't that what you do with your children? You raise your children and come up a certain point. You got to let them go. Every time you let them go, become adults. And, and then you can come and visit their church as a guest pastor. Hey, this is my mentor. Alan Johnson, he's coming to give you a word. Mm -hmm. And they're going to reverence you because you're the one that taught their pastor. Have that mindset. It has to be a faithfulness in this. Maybe this is why your church don't want nothing to do with you. Because you won't release them to do the work of God when they're ready. Or you don't even know when they're ready. Because you're thinking about you and how much tithe money you can bring and how much money you can bring into your church. And you know they were big tithers and big givers, so you want to keep them. They can still be big givers and have their own church outside. What you talking about? Because God will replace them with somebody to bless you. Don't worry about it. It will come together. Because they trusted you. To be their shepherd. Now they're the under shepherd. And they're going to go out and start their ministry. There's faithfulness in that too. They were faithful unto you. Why can't you be faithful and trust God. That God's going to lead them and guide them the right way. Weren't you a spiritual parent? Release your kids. Let them grow up. They turned 18. Time for them to leave the home. Same way in church. Learn that. Because there still should be other ministries and churches built to other most parts. Remember, the gospel has to go to the uttermost parts of the world. Jesus says, go into the world and preach. It's true. Don't have to be a brick and mortar. Could be a ministry like ours. Radio ministry. Going out teaching from church to church, going to different countries. Everybody's ministry is different. Everybody's ministry is not brick and mortar. That's right. It's not the building. Mm -hmm. It's what God called you to. But the problem is, can you be faithful in that? Or are you giving up easy? Did God say to give up? Look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. That was number 3. It says, and let us, let us not be weary in well-doing. Let us not be tired. Or weary while we're doing the work of God. Listen. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. For in time or due season we shall what? We shall reap if we faint not. If we keep on doing what we're doing, we're going to get back, but we can't faint. Don't give up. <clears throat> Read. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Let us do good who? Unto all men. Unto all men. Especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Especially those that are in the house. What have we been doing lately on Facebook? Bashing them. We are teaching false doctrine. So, pray for them. Approach them. Tell them to their face that they're wrong. And try to love on them and compel them to come back in. If you know that they're preaching fault or is this something that you heard gossip which is going to send you straight to hell if your story is not right mm. but we heard don't mean that they did it exactly you might have heard something about me or I might have said something to you and you still took it the wrong way always trying to find fault well that's my ministry your ministry is not fault finding fault finding will send you straight to hell What else does it say, Mom? That part. Okay. Read that again. And let us not be weary in well-doing, mm. for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If we faint not. As we therefore have opportunity, let mm. us do good to all men. All men. Not pick and choose, not which click mm. we're a part of. Mm. Especially, especially unto them. Especially to leaders. Who are of the household. Of the household of faith. Number four. 
Write it down. This is going to be a hard nut to crack right here. We need people who are accountable of other people that we can trust our hearts with in God's ministry. Hard to find nowadays. Hard to find. Got a lot of people yapping their jaws about people behind their back, but nobody wants to be accountable and help. Or if we try to be accountable and help, we got opposition because the people don't want to show the sin nature in their life and say, hey, I guess I'm messing up. Can you help me? They're too proud. Got the dukes up by like Tyson and Vandy Holyfield. Don't want to be corrected. Don't want to be told when they're wrong. Don't want to love on one another. Don't want to be account. There's no accountability. There's nobody walking. They're walking in infidelity nowadays. There's no more integrity in the body of Christ anymore. Hmm. We need people that we can follow. See, what we need to do, because I know it's hard to find, and what me and Lisa are doing, we need to ask God to knit us with the right people and put good people around us that think like we do. We all got to be speaking the same thing. We need to ask God for these people to come in our lives. Look at James 5.16 again. Here it goes. Confess your faults one to another. See, we need to find people that we can talk our faults to. That won't go behind our backs and talk crap. Mm -hmm. That we would keep secrets. I know we, me and Will, we had a lot of conversations. There's things I would never talk about that me and Will talk about. Because we have that kind of relationship. I've known him for a while from Baltimore, Maryland. Joe, who you just seen online. There's a lot of things. When I lived in Dallas, me and Joe talked about, you will never know nothing about Joe. But Joe told me in private and confidence, and I told him in private and confidence. These are my friends. Right, they may not be here, but they're dear to my heart because it's things that we can talk about and we help one another out. But you'll never hear it out of my mouth talking about them behind their backs. Never. The love of God is here between us brothers. We have that camaraderie. And then I pray for him. He prays for me. What else does it say, Mom? It says, and pray for one another. Pray for one another. That, mm -hmm. that you may be healed. That you might be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Look at Acts chapter 2. Look at verse 43, I believe. I think it's 43. I think it's 43. Oh, no, no, 40, 42. Okay, and they continued. Right, right. Oh, Let's go 41. to 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Remember when, when Peter was on the day of Pentecost and he spoke in <laughs> tongues? And everybody th said they, were, they, were, they had to be mad. And they were speaking the wonderful works of God in everybody's language. This is what happened. Check it. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls. Why? Read. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Because they accepted the word of God that was preached through the apostles. And they were on one accord and one mind. Read. Uh, in breaking of bread and in prayers. They broke bread. They went to each other's houses. And in prayers together. We don't do that no more with the body of Christ. Most churches don't even have a <coughs> a time where they specifically pray as a body together. And if it is, it's only one or two members showing up. They all came together and prayed for each other. They had the same thing in common. They were with the word of God. They spoke the same thing. Read. And fear came upon every soul. And reverence and respect came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Ah, so they saw the signs and wonders being done too. Read. And all that believed were together. 
All that believe were what? Together. All that believe were what? Together. Together. Not separated. Not you believing what you want to believe and that person believing. We all came together in one accord. Read. And had all things in common. And they had all things in common. That means when you were poor, you became rich because somebody rich took you under their wing and showed you how to get yours. It was no handouts. You were working in the same body and you were the same person. So some would sell their possessions, lay before the apostles' feet, and everybody distributed so everybody had even. They looked out for one another. When will we come to that point where we're faithful doing this? Or are we just thinking about, are we just going to get the American dream and leave everybody else out? We don't think about planting seeds and giving to people like this in organizations or helping out other families. We don't think about that. We only think about ourselves. When is the faithfulness going to come? Read. And sold their possessions and goods and parted listen, them listen. to all men. Uh, as every man had need. Did you hear what he just said? As every man that had need. Check this. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple. Uh, and breaking bread from house to house. House to house. They had church and houses back then. Read. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Did you hear what he just said? This is the essence. This is how you make churches grow. Go to Acts chapter 4. And look at, look at verse 21. Here we go. 23? Yeah, right here. 23. Now, this is when Peter and Silas got released from prison. The angels let them out of prison. Now, check this. They came back to the people that were at home, at Rona's house, praying for them while they were in prison. And this is what happened. Check. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. See, they opposed them. They went against them and told them to stop teaching in the name of Jesus. What if we had that today and it's coming to that point where they're trying to stop, even on Facebook, they restricted me for six days. I'm on my fourth day in restriction for teaching the word of God, for sharing the word of God between pages. Can you believe that? They're trying to stop the move of God even here on Facebook. Read. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice. Mm. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, to Go God back. with one accord and mm. said, Thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. Mm. Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage? Why did the heathen rage? Why is the heathen trying to stop us? They came together and started praying in the spirit. And started speaking the word of God. Why had the heathen rage? Why are, is the world opposing us for standing on the word of God and this gospel? But notice they came together. It was no lone rangers. It was no pastors by themselves. They all came together. All the churches as a congregation as one. Read. And people imagine vain things. Uh -huh. people, the kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and his, against his Christ. Against the Lord and against his Christ. They're trying to oppose us. This is what's happening in the last days. It happened then. It's starting to happen now. Read. For a, of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, mm -hmm. whom thou had anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, mm -hmm. with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. Mm -hmm. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined, before to be done. Mm -hmm. And now, Lord, behold your threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand. Father, give us the boldness to continue the work even though they are opposing us. This is the true church. Most of you churches, COVID came, you gave up. When COVID came, you shut down. But these people had the government against them. And they said, Lord, just give us the strength to go back out there and do your work. But you gave up during COVID. 
85% of the church. Of, and, and, and some of you, I believe that you true, but you got more scared of the coronavirus and what the demonic spirits was bringing more than the power of God that's in operation in your life. These people stood up together and came together in unity in the power of God against the powers that be, man. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Are you faithful? Are you committed to this? Are you willing to fight the good fight of faith against principalities? Because that's what the coronavirus was from, from principalities and powers, from the darkness of this world. It didn't come from God. It came from Satan to cut the church off. Hmm. But these people were in opposition. They were hung upside down in prison. The angels let them out. And when they came together and told the multitude about what happened, they said, why have they either heathen rage, raged against us? Why are they trying to stop us, the Lord Jesus Christ? Why are they trying to stop us from preaching? We're going to start a revolution and God give us the power to go back out there and do the work. Read that one more time, baby, that line. For of a truth against the holy child Jesus, whom mm. thou hast anointed, both mm. Herod and Pontius Pilate, uh. with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together. Mm. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. Mm. And now, Lord, behold her threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thy hand to heal that signs and wonders yes. may be done by yes. the name of thy holy child, yes. Jesus. Yes, that's what you should be saying. Mm -hmm. Father God, I speak forth that the power and the anointing of God goes forth and stretch and continue to heal and set free. Mm -hmm. And we're going against the powers that be. We're starting a revolution here. Now check this out. Read this. And when they had prayed, uh -huh. the place was shaken when the they were assembled together. The place was shaken. The anointing, the fire, the power of the shit, which you call the Shekinah glory, which I don't know where, where that came from, but it was some kind of glory. It was God's glory. It was the true glory. It was right there because they all came together in unity. Are we faithful enough to come together like that? Read. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they were all what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. And they all spake the word of God with Boldness. And they all speak the word of God with what? Boldness. And what else happened, Mom? And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. One heart and one soul. I don't need no clicks like that. Yeah. But when will the whole body come together at the first church? This should be an example. This may be why we feel like we're by ourselves. We got to come together. Black, white, Spanish, Chinese, I don't care. We have the same thing in common. We have Yeshua Kamasiah, Jesus the Christ, the Lord Jesus the Christ. And we should be one in Christ. Read. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. He never said that everything we possessed was our own. Check this. But they all had things in common. They all, again, had like, all things like the second common. chapter, they all had things in common. Yep, had all things in common. And with great power gave the apostles witness. And great power gave great the power. apostles the witness of, of, the no, resurrection. of the resurrection. Because it's shown through the power of the signs and wonders and miracles. When was the last time you seen that in your church? Not a lot. Not a lot. There was something wrong then. Read. And great grace was upon them all. And what was upon them all? Great grace. There's that word grace again. God's unmerited favor with man and children and with his spirit and with the agreement of the Holy Spirit with you together. And God giving you that chance to get it right. Grace. Go ahead. Neither was there any among them that lacked. Nobody lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses. Listen, listen. Sold them. Sold it. And brought the prices of the things that were sold. Mm. Laid them down at the apostles' feet. Laid it at the apostles' feet. <laughs> and distribution was made unto every man according as he had needed. Give it out. Nobody was poor. <laughs> Everybody was rich. The rich was helping the poor. They had the same thing in common. If one didn't have a trade, come on, I'll show you my trade and show you how to make it on your own since you're struggling. He didn't lean on for a handout. He worked for it. They carried the same thing in common. 
This is what the church needs to be doing today. And what else happened, Ma? Verse 36, and Joseph, who was let, who, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a mm. Levite, mm. and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. At the apostles' feet. So the rich people were contributing to this too. Barnabas was rich. He, he, he had to be a property owner, a couple of properties. Because he was able to lay the proceeds and everything, boom, at the park, get these people a place to live. Just gave it all up. Just gave it all up. The whole. The love of God. Mm -hmm. That's if you have it. Now, number four, or number five, I believe another reason is why we feel like we're out of place is we need a good foundation of the word of God, teaching, leadership, leading us how to worship, leading us into the presence of God and the Holy Spirit. Prayer and sound doctrine to correct teaching. Now, I know we're behind all this other stuff, talking about uh, ancestral worship and all this stuff and mixing it. No, we're talking about sound doctrine. Look at Galatians chapter 4. Look at verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> I might have to leave to take care of this. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. We're almost done. Okay. <clears throat> Look at what now? Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing at all from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Do you understand what that means? Though he's an heir. Say, for example, you have a king that has a castle. He has a young son. He doesn't know the ropes yet. He has to learn the foundation of knowing what it is to be a king and knowing what it is to lead. So, he puts his son on the same level as where the slaves are at. So he can learn the ropes. Even though he's part of the kingship because if his father dies, he becomes king. So right now, we are in training with God. Or we need mentors. Lisa can be a mentor. I can be a mentor. Somebody else can be a mentor. You need to be up under so you can learn into an appointed time. Now check this out. Read verse 2. Okay. But is under tutors and governors. But is under <laughs> tutors or mentors and governors. Read. Until the time appointed of the Father. Until the time appointed by God the Father. Do not leave to start a ministry early because you have zeal. Sit up under that man of God or that woman of God for a season. Get grounded and rooted in the word. Go through something. Get a foundation. First, understand me. I know what I'm talking about. Don't make the same mistake that I made. Don't make the same mistake that some pastors have made. Or some man of God that have made in the past. A lot of them learned from this. Look at Jeremiah chapter 3. Look at verse 15. Got one more after this. We're almost done. What does it say, Mom? 13. Uh, three, 15. three, fifteen, fifteen. Okay. Chapter three, verse. And I 15. will give you pastors according to and, my heart. And I will give you pastors according to what? My heart. God's going to give you pastors according to His heart. All you got to do is ask Him. And what else, Mom? And which will feed you with knowledge and understanding? Which will feed you with what? Knowledge understanding. and understanding of what the scriptures are about. An understanding of where you're going. <clears throat> but make sure he's a true man or woman of God. Make sure he ain't about just this. Mm. 
Make sure he's not about no filthy liquor. And he's about womanizing women and doing some crazy stuff. He got to teach sound doctrine. Make sure he ain't teaching no half water down thing either. Make sure he's teaching the truth. Like what we're teaching. Look at, Je look at Jeremiah 23, 4. Jeremiah tw chapter 23, verse 4. And I will set up shepherds over them. And I will shut up what? Shepherds. Pastors or teachers or shepherds. Doesn't over matter. them which Elders. shall feed them. Elders which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more. And we will fear no more. Nor be dismayed. We will not be dismayed. Neither this shall they be lacking, said the Lord. Neither shall we be lacking. They got to teach you those things. Do you understand what I'm saying? Number six, final. This is what God showed me. Last reason we feel out of place is because we are set apart. What if you're living right? What if you are set apart? Many in the church say they're set apart. But if they're truly set apart, why are you being opposed by the fake and the phony? If you're doing right and they're opposing you for doing right, Means that they're fake and phony and you're the real deal. And they're trying to make you feel like you're nothing. Because you took time to pray to God. You took time to ask God to help you with your sin nature. Which you got over the home. You took time in prayer and fasting. You took time in your word to study your scripture. You did what you were supposed to do, and now God has exalted you. And here comes this hypocrite or this fake person of the, of the cloth trying to tell you that you're nothing. How many of you have been there? We are in the world, but we're not. We don't do according to the world. You have become a nonconformist. You're not doing what they do. Many in the church still have a worldly outlook on things. And if you speak the truth to them, to their face, mind you, they're going to oppose you. Beware. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separated, Lord, and I shall receive you. Leave them alone. Smith Wigglesworth had a saying. What was that first saying you said? He said the early church did what? What was that saying that Smith Wigglesworth said? Go to Facebook and get it. <laughs> you, wait till you hear this. He said the early church wanted to know, what Listen. must I do to be saved? Mm -hmm. Today's church is asking, what can I do and still be saved? What can I do and still be saved? You got to watch out for the what I can do crowd. In other words, they substitute what they do for God, but they can be doing God in vain. Mm -hmm. First, find out what you must do to be saved <clears throat> and delivered and set free. Instead, you're coming to church, you're not delivered, you're not set free, and you're doing what you want to do, but you say you're still all right with God. Get away from those people. There's another saying he said, too. He said this. We will never change the world by going to church. And the churches are set up like, well, you got to have a church and, and, and this is going to save the world. No, it's not. No, it's not. It says, we will only change the church by, change the world by being the church. That means you have to take the church to them. Didn't he say go into all the world? Go into all the world. Sit they may not want to come to your church. Yep. Because they seen other churches be the same. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to bring the church to them. You're the church. And the Bible said the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Last but not least, look at John 17. Look at the way Jesus prayed to the Father for us. Check this out. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, mm. 
<clears throat> but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Keep them from, from, from the evil that's in the world. Go ahead. They are not of the world. We're not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. Just as Jesus is not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy what? Word, sanctify Sanct them through thy truth. Through the truth. Thy word is truth. Your word is true. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. So, you're still in the world. Jesus prayed to the Father, just as you sent me, I'm sending them into the world. But they're not going to be part of the world. They're going to stand on the word of God in truth as they do the work that Jesus did. He's talking about us. He's talking about us. We have to get it right. It's one reason why a lot of people feel like they don't fit in. Because they're in the world, but they're not of it. They're trying to conform mm -hmm. to the things of the world mm -hmm. and still be saved. And, and bring it into the church. And bring it into the church, yeah. And then there's some people that oppose it. Mm -hmm. And then there's some people that are borderline with it. Because we're not all speaking the same thing. Right. This could be the reasons why we feel like we're by ourselves and we feel outside. Pray to God, the Lord of the harvest, that not that he would only bring people into the harvest, but that he would make sure the right churches, the right ministries are there to prepare God's people for the ministry. The right way. I pray for the harvest. But you got so many false churches that they're getting wrapped up into that are not teaching the true doctrine, the alterated word of God. There are some that are. I know some. I can recommend some to you. Or you can come on Facebook and get with me and Lisa's teachings. We love you guys to life. This ends, and we're going to start getting into some deep teachings on the kingdom of God. And I thought I'd share a little bit later on and, and look out in the future. I'm going to talk about the lifestyle, the, the gay lifestyle between the lesbians and the homosexuals. I, I'm going to have some teachings and on this, and I'm going to laugh because it's a big thing. You're talking to a person that lived both lifestyles, was a bisexual at one time in my life. So there's a lot of questions I can answer. Spirit-wise, from ancient Egyptian-wise, this is the spirit that came on through the generations to the generations to us now. There's so much stuff that I can carry on, and I can tell you how I feel about it and how God sees it different from what the church sees it. I'm going to share with you some things. And we're going to talk about, I'm going to openly share, because my life is an open book. It's like Paul says, I'm going to teach and I'm going to preach according to the weaknesses that was in my flesh at one time. So I can talk about, I can elaborate on it, because I've been where you've been. So for so those of you, you that are living the transvestite, the transgender lifestyle, the, the, the homosexual or the lesbian lifestyle, or the or, and, bisexual. And bisexual lifestyle, <clears throat> we can sit down and talk openly about this. And I'm not going to twist the word. I'm not going to change it. I may bring up certain men and women of God that lived this lifestyle before. And I'm going to show you the reasons why from their upbringing and from my upbringing, from other people's upbringing that I know for sure. And we're going to share the word of God. I'm not going to come on here to condemn you. My nephew's gay. One of my favorite nephews, both two of them, love them to life. So I have nothing to say bad or put down. I'm only going to give you God's word. Yes, I will bring my opinion to the table. Yes, Lisa will bring her opinion to the table. But there needs to be a deeper understanding of why 
and what's really going on and what caused it. So you, you got to understand where all of this has come from, from the history until now. I'm not going to talk about it now because I'm going to go on some teachings on the kingdom of God first. Because I think you need to understand a kingdom perspective from God and how God sees you. You have to, first of all, before you even talk about the kingdom, you have to talk about identity, who you are in Christ. So we're going to deal with identity first. Because identity is going to help you to change and be transformed by the renewing of your mind by the word. And it's going to help you to focus on God better so the devil doesn't shift you to the left and to the right. Your focus will be in your relationship with Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit and God. All three. We're going to talk about the Godhead in the kingdom. You need to understand who you are. I think that's the biggest problem. The church has not explained to you who you are because most of the churches don't even know who they are. So we're going to elaborate and we're going to dig deep. And a lot of it's going to come from my book on the foundation of life in the kingdom. I hope you bought the book. It's online. www. What's that? Hold on. Show that book, baby. Www. Restoring Unify Radio Ministry. Radio.com. Restoring Unify Radio.com. This book. I'm going to be starting to teach from this book, The Foundation of Life in the Kingdom. And I'm going to go through the kingdom principles slowly. Based on this book I wrote back in 2005, 2006. Get this book online, I'm telling you. I got it through Author House online at a cheaper price. You can get it at Borders, Barnes & Noble's. Foundation of Life in the Kingdom, Alan Johnson. I wrote this book before I, me and Lisa got married. Now, we also have another book, Why Haven't Things Changed in Your Life? You want to get this book, too. It's online. You can get it in the e-book. A lot of my teachings are going to be out of this book. So I'm going to be dealing a lot with the kingdom in 2024, because you need to understand where you are. A lot of my quotes are going to come from one of my mentors, Miles Monroe. I'm not going to copy him. I'm going to come from a kingdom perspective from what's happening in the world now. You need to understand the kingdom agenda. You need to understand it's not about money. It's about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's about God's agenda in heaven. Huh? That he ordained in heaven before the foundation of the world and he came and put it on you in earth for you to go forth and do it. You called out chosen people. You're a remnant. You're set apart. That's why I had to end it on the part that we're set apart on this lesson. When you understand the kingdom, you'll never feel out of place. You'll always know that you're accepted in the beloved. No matter what the devil brings at you, you know that you're a child of woman, a woman of God. A man of God, a woman of God. You will not change. Nobody will ever change your mind. And your steps will be ordered by God. That's why I got to go here. I got to get back on track myself. I've been out of it for a while. <laughs> We love you to life. Join our flagship station, www.RestoringUnifiedRadio.com or join us on our YouTube page. We can get all our teachings. You'll, you'll see the, the page up there for YouTube for Restoring Unified Minster. And I think the last four digits, if I can remember, <coughs> was it 2974, something like that? <coughs> I just came out of the snow in New Jersey just the other day. Coming back to this nice warm weather in the south. I 
think it's www. Where's the picture? Uh, okay. Oh, there it is, yeah. It is 2974, yep. Yep. To restore and unify Radio Minced T 2974. Check us out. I'll just put Restore and Unify Radio Ministries. It'll pop up in YouTube. You'll see me in Lisa's picture. Click on the videos. Join our teachings as we bring them on. These teachings we're going to start implementing and put them on very, very soon. And we just got the ones on dreams and visions, the one we did before the new year started. And these, this is our new series, our first series, when you feel like you're out of place. Because I feel like sometimes we're out of place and the devil tries to make us feel that way because he's trying to destroy us before we find out what our call is. And when you get in the kingdom of God, it's about calling. When you get in the kingdom of God, it's about divine majesty. When you get in the kingdom of God, it's about you being part of the household faith and you being the kingship. And, and you have to grow, first of all, to sonship. And then you go into kingship. We're going to talk a lot about David. We're going to go a lot and elaborate a lot about the Old Testament in reference to the New Testament. But I thought that we're not supposed to go by the Old Testament. Jesus came to fulfill what? The law and the prophets and bring it over to the new. There are certain things in the old and new that have to be brought over. That's why the Bible says every time you have Peter and you, you see um, Paul the Apostle, when they make a quote, they quote it, they say, this goes by what the prophet Isaiah said. This goes by what the book of Exodus and Moses said. And they bring it over to the New Testament. That's Jesus' fulfillment of the old to the new. I'm going to have to bring you to the realization and help you to understand that. There's a whole lot more that we got to cover. And I'm not through teaching yet. I'm going to teach till I die. This is what's going to happen. Kingdom of God has to be taught, has to be preached to all the parts of the world. And then the Bible says, then the end shall come. Half of you don't even know what the kingdom is. So how can Jesus come? He's sitting at the edge of the seat trying to come. But the kingdom of God has to get in your face first. And you're going to have to get his agenda. And you're going to have to start doing it. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. You can't be sitting there deceiving yourself and sitting around like a bump on the log like my pops used to tell. Got to get up and do something. Faith without works is dead. We love you to life. I'm Al. I'm Lisa. We got to take two steps from here to get out of here. Stay tuned next week when we talk about the kingdom of God.